Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the Bulletproof DynamoDB Golang CRUD API series. Um, I hope you've watched the video zero. So there's a part zero that I've created to just give you more context uh, as to what we are doing uh, with the series. Um, in case you haven't checked it out, please check it out before you come to this part 11 of the series. So what I did was I created part one to 10, then I created part zero, which is ideally supposed to be before part one, before you, um, you know, started the series and then you're supposed to be on part 11 which is this video okay in case you haven't watched part zero please watch it so let's come back here uh, in part zero i've explained to you what the function what what each of these components these different components like handlers repository and controllers all of these do right i've already explained it to you um, and in part 10 i had said that we'll now work on entities so what i'll do is i'll go ahead and i'll start creating entities um, there's a file that I'll create called base.co. So in part zero, I showed you why there's something called as base, which is base are those things that will be like the base things, like let's say the ID and the created ad and updated ad, those timestamps and those things that we have in our product. And then we have uh, something called as a product itself. So we'll have uh, a folder called product and we'll have a file called product.go. And since I'm assuming you have seen the uh, part zero, you'll uh, understand why I'm doing this, right? Where I have a base and I have product and they're both related. And product consists of the base also. So first we'll work on our base.go file. So firstly, um, what I'll do is I'll uh, name this package entities. And we'll have our import statement here. For import, I need my GitHub dot com slash google slash uuid to create my uh, unique ids and i need the time package you'll soon see why it's uh, like i can tell you why because you've already seen the part zero right so you know that we have to put timestamps like created at updated at so for those timestamps we obviously need the time package anyhow so firstly what we'll do is we'll create the interface now there's a High chance you, you probably know how interfaces work. It's a basic Golang concept. But in case you don't know how interfaces work, uh, please check out the Golang tour. Please check out some, uh, you know, uh, watch some material on YouTube on interfaces. And I'll also be creating a complete video on interfaces so that in case you have not been understanding interfaces um, in, in, other my, in my other videos and in this video, you'll understand interfaces really well and you'll understand why we're using interfaces everywhere these days. Um, like in my other series, I'm using interfaces. So you'll understand why uh, I use it and uh, you know in case you don't know I'm assuming that 90% of you would already know this uh, because it's like a Golang concept right and it's not just a Golang concept it's also there in many other uh, languages so there's a high chance you probably already know this but in case you don't know I'll be creating a lot of content around this so don't worry and also there's already a lot of content on YouTube around it So we are setting all these different things. This interface needs to have all these different properties like table name, generate ID, set created at, updated at, get map. We'll have a map of string and have interface. Then you'll have get filter ID. Map string and interface. Okay, so we have created our interface. Now we have to create our struct. So one is the base that you already know about. And the base struct is going to consist of ID, just ID, sorry. And created at updated at. Okay, and then you'll have some functions to uh, basically set your created ad, set your updated ad, and set your ID. To help you do that, you'll have these functions that we've already defined in our interfaces, which are basically those methods, right? The generate ID and set ID, these will be methods. So these will be base methods. So base is, a, you first define a struct called base, and then you create these struct methods that we'll create right now. For example, generate ID is a struct method for it to be a struct method this is how you'll write that this is a struct method okay 
And here you'll say ID and we'll use a UUID package. There's a dot here. And you'll also tell Golang that in JSON, this is what it's going to look like. And in your time package, this is what it's going to look like. Yeah, so in your time package, you'll access time with capital T. And you're also writing how it's going to look like in JSON. Here it will look like updated at. In case you didn't know, um, I mean, obviously you know that, but I'm just repeating it again, that Golang cannot understand JSON um, natively, just like J JavaScript. Uh, a lot of people transitioning from JavaScript to J uh, Golang get confused because they're so used to uh, JSON being understood by JavaScript, but it's not the case with other languages, uh, with Ruby and with languages like Golang and Python. Uh, you have to uh, work on the data uh, for uh, the language itself to understand JSON because any other language apart from JavaScript does not understand JSON natively. They have their own patterns and they have their own data structures. Uh, anyhow, with that out of the way, let's create our methods. So what this method generate ID does is it just creates a new ID. And how does it create a new ID? It takes UUID package and it calls the function, the new function to create the new ID. And for the base, which is B in this case, you, this is how you're setting the ID. Okay. Now we also want to create, similarly we want to create methods for uh, created at and updated at. So similarly, you'll set like this, created at is equal to time dot now, which is the time that's right now. And similarly, we'll do the same for set updated at, which is b dot updated at is equal to time dot now. And I'll need one more function, which is to get time format. This returns a string to me. And here we'll set the time format, which could be anything. It could be, let's just give a random year like 2010 and 0102. This is a regular timestamp. If you don't want to write it on your own, you can get it off the internet. This is the regular timestamp that you get. Um, so this is this is the kind of format that we want to follow for the time, right? For the timestamps. Now your uh, base file is ready. You want to start working on your uh, product file. So here we'll call it package product. We'll import a couple of things. The first thing that I want to import is encoding slash JSON. Now. Now, uh, a few minutes back, I talked about how Golang does not understand JSON on its own. That's why you need to use, um, that's why you need to use um, encoding, the encoding package and JSON, right, to, to be able to work with it. So it's called marshalling and unmarshalling that you have to use. And the encoding package helps you to do that. And we'll also need the errors package uh, and the time package. And then we'll need a couple of more packages. We'll need the service DynamoDB package. So let me import that also, github.com slash AWS slash AWS dash SDK dash go slash service slash DynamoDB. And you'll also need the github.com slash Google slash UUID package. And I'll need some entities. Um, I'll need these entities, basically the whole thing to uh, basically I want to, you know, uh, work with base. So I'll, I'll import that later on. But for now, what we'll do is we'll define a product struct. We'll define a struct called product. And it'll have, like I said, it'll have entities dot base. 
This means that it'll have all of these different things. It'll have ID, created at, updated at. And it will have its own name. So in this, I had shown you using a diagram in the um, part zero of the series. String, and here you'll tell it, how does it look in JSON? It looks like this, it will be name basically. So um, you created two structs, right? You created a struct called base, now you created a struct called product. And so um, we want to create a couple of functions, starting with a function called interface to model. I've talked about this function in the part zero video of the series. This function helps us to do a lot of marshalling and unmarshalling from JSON to a format that's understandable by Golang. It's going to accept data, which is of type interface. That's why the function is called interface to model and it returns the model itself, which in our case is product, which is a struct, right? So it's going to say instance and which is basically your product comma error, which is an error. And here we'll write some logic for marshalling and marshalling. Another function that I need is my get filter ID. This function we've already used in case you um, have forgot or haven't noticed. We already use this function here in our controllers. When we are using the find one function, we are uh, getting our get filter ID, basically we're trying to get our ID. So how do you get your ID? We'll have the function here that will define it. This returns a map, string, interface, and most importantly, this function is a struct method. Right, so when I write something like this, it just means that this is the struct product and this is a struct method for that product, or for that uh, struct, right? This is the method for that struct. Then I'll have uh, one more function called the table name, which it doesn't do much. It just returns the name of the table that I want to um, send data to in DynamoDB. In this case, it's simply products. So as you can see, we don't have to do these things, but we're doing it just to get a layer of, um, you know, like it just makes the code cleaner, makes everything, uh, you know, provides an abstraction in the code. And it's just a good design pattern. Just a good project structure. So we don't have to do any of this, but it's just, um, you know, it's completely optional. We can do that, right? And now uh, I'll, I have another function that I need later on, not right not as of now, but I'll still create it. It's um, going to be a struct method as well. It's going to take nothing. It's going to return a slice of bytes or an error doesn't do much it just returns json dot marshall product now you want to um, also create two more functions so two more functions i'll just uh, open them up here one function that i need is called get map And the other function that I need is called parse dynamo, dynamo attribute structs. This was the function I was talking about that might confuse you guys. This is why I created the part zero video at the first place. Um, I mean, we had reached part 10, then I thought this is the function that will come and it will confuse you guys. So uh, let me explain all of that to you in part uh, zero of that video. That's why I created part zero. So I've talked about this function there as well. And um, we'll create this function here. Basically, all the, the Dynamo attributes um, parsing that into a struct. That's why we basically have this function. Okay, so what I'll do is um, I'll at least complete this interface to model function completely, quickly as in. So I want to take a variable called bytes and I want to take error and I want to call json.marshall. So JSON, uh, I have access to that from this library called encoding. 
I'm going to say json.marshall I'm going to pass the data which is basically the interface that I'm getting here. Then we'll just handle the error. We'll say error not equal to nil. We'll return the instance comma error. And finally we'll return the instance comma json dot on marshall bytes comma ampersand instance. All right, so we just left with these functions and then our entities folder is also complete. Um, a lot of the code in this project is complete. I think a couple of, uh, a few things here and there might be left, but that's, that's about it. I think the tools is left probably. And that's, that's about it. I mean, not much is left, right? Um, so this, this is where I'd like to end this video and um, we'll follow this up tomorrow and we'll try and complete this video series quickly. If you have any comments, any issues, any problems, put that put them in the comment box below. I'm uh, I'm acknowledging the fact that there are some new things that we're doing in the series that you may not be comfortable with. Um, it's completely okay to ask questions. You know, we're doing a lot of things that may not be necessary. You might think it's not necessary to have a function to uh, just get the time format. It's not necessary to have a function to just get. Uh, the table name, uh, which is products, right? But this is just a different type of a project structure and design pattern that you're following, that we're following this time. Uh, now, I won't talk about design patterns. I won't try and confuse you because I know there are a lot of um, like people who are new to Golang who are trying to follow this. So I won't talk about design patterns and um, you know the different design patterns and how they work. I'm just showing, I'm just getting your feet wet. I'm just showing you uh, what this is. And then I'll create actual videos about design patterns from scratch and why they why we have them and which are which are the ones that are there and which are the best ones and how to use which design pattern. Right now, this this is a design pattern, uh, kind of a hybrid design pattern. But I won't uh, like try and confuse you. Just try try and follow this project structure, get used to it, get used to the syntax, understand how things are going in this project, and then I'll take you to the next level, which is you know uh, helping you to understand from design patterns. Okay. So I hope uh, all of this is uh, making sense. If it's not making sense, please put it in the comments below. I'm always there to help you out. I can have, have a call with you also if you if you want, right? Or uh, like uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm always there. So uh, my description, like my link for connecting with me on LinkedIn is always there in the description of all videos, almost all videos. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next uh, episode.